Hello, I'm Richard O'Neill, storyteller and author, and I'd like to read you a story called The Legend of Gypsy Joe. This is the tale of Gypsy Joe, a travelling man from a long time ago. They say that Joe came from another place and time, or even another world or dimension. All we know for sure is that Gypsy Joe turned up. Things happened, strange things and good things. They said his stories were so captivating that people flocked from miles around to hear them. They say he never told the same story twice. They said his stories could transport you far away as if you were traveling on a magic carpet. These things and many more they said about Gypsy Joe. That's how he became the legend he is today. The legend of Gypsy Joe is something passed on from person to person. It's never been in a book. It's never been in a film. But so many people knew it. And you'll know it too soon enough. Joe always arrived on his own. Did he have a family somewhere? No one knows. But he travelled in a small caravan. And when the winter came, parked up whenever the first snowflake came down. Then you'd see him in his great army overcoat. Some people say he was awarded many medals for his bravery. Some say he put a curse on the local football club after they turfed him off his camping ground. Some say many things about Joe. All we know is that the stories about him are still being passed around. Renowned for his wisdom and his skill as a woodcarver, it is said that he could help with any problem. This is the legend of Gypsy Joe, a man who lived a long time ago. The lucky peg. Every so many pegs, Joe, like many woodcarvers, would find a bit of wood that was different, a bit bent, misshapen, maybe a knot in the wood, making it more interesting and different. Every time this happened, Joe would put that peg aside for someone special, a lucky peg. And one such lucky peg was given to a woman called Nora, a dear woman who was kindness herself. Nora's life had not been easy. Brought up by her dad after her mother died, Nora had to look after all of her other brothers and sisters and the house they lived in while her dad went to work in an old cotton mill. Nora did a wonderful job, everyone said so. For such a young woman herself, she made sure the house was clean and the children were well dressed and well fed. When the children got older, Nora was able to go to work in the mill too, where she met Albert, with whom she fell in love, and he with her. They were soon engaged to be married, but then Albert had to go to war. It'll be over by Christmas and we'll be married then, he told her. Like many other young brave men, Albert unfortunately did not return. And Nora had to carry on with her life, broken-hearted and destined now to be single for the rest of her life, a spinster, as they called them back then. Time is a healer, they say, and time did help to heal the loss of Albert. And Nora thought she would like to be married, but finding someone was the problem. One day she had cause to go and see Gypsy Joe to buy some pegs. She paid him for the two dozen and had a little chat with him. I sense your sadness and confusion, the old man said as he handed Nora her change. Take this as a gift, he said, handing her a rather beautiful if misshapen peg. It's a lucky peg, keep it safe. In those days there were no dating agencies like there are now. If you didn't meet someone in church or at a local event, then you wouldn't meet someone at all and you wouldn't be married. Nora had met a lovely man and was married within the year. Was it the lucky peg? No one knew for sure, but many people, including Nora, were convinced it was. And that was a story about Gypsy Joe, a travelling man who lived a long time ago. There are many, many, many stories, and so far to go, with the tales about the legendary Gypsy Joe. This is the end for now, but there'll be many more.